Hello and welcome to the Sim Hanger, the Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. Today I'm excited. The HP Reverb headset has arrived from Hewlett Packard, and today we're going to look at unboxing, the installation, and first impressions. We'll follow this video up in part two with a full review. So why did I order the Reverb as opposed to the Valve Index or the Oculus Rift S? Well, mainly because of its stunning resolution and lightweight. Any concerns about the Windows Mixed Reality tracking really isn't a concern for me, being mainly a simmer and I tend to be stationary. I don't use room scale VR very often. Today we're going to be looking at what's in the box and unboxing the installation of the Windows Mixed Reality software, as well as making it compatible with Steam VR. Don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell for future notifications. Thank you. Let's get started. I purchased the Hewlett Packard Reverb directly from Hewlett Packard and it cost me just under £590. I did purchase the Pro or Enterprise version as the consumer model is not yet available for sale. In the box we've got the standard paperwork, warranty and a very basic set of instructions and description of content. This is the main cable connection to the headset and then a standard display port and USB 3 connector. This cable only comes with the Pro version. It has the same connectors with a mini DP port and is to connect to a backpack. You won't have that cable if you're buying the consumer version. And a DP to mini DP adapter ideal for those that are using laptops. Batteries, these will be for the controllers. Now let's get to the meat of it. First of all let's have a look at the uh, Windows Mixed Reality controller. It's the standard Windows Mixed Reality controller, exactly the same as version 1. Mini joystick trackpad, a number of buttons, trigger button there, and a grip button. Pretty standard. And now to the main event. Well, that does not, yeah, that's really light. And that's the HP Reverb. Feel solid, build quality seems good. Quite surprised how light it is to be honest. The two cameras in the front there for tracking. Velcro strips on the side, very similar to the Oculus to adjust the tightness of the headset and the clip out earphones. These are also removable and these are our 2K lenses. We can take the safety film off the top. I won't lie, that is a little satisfying. If you don't want to use the built-in earphones, you can use the earphone jack, and that's the connection to the PC. Two microphones underneath. And the nose flap, it's very soft. That shouldn't be a problem at all. And uh, the face mask is a leatherette. Again, if you're buying the consumer version, it will be cloth. The leatherette's ideal. 
uh, as you can just wipe it. And that's all that's in the box. Let's have a look at the software. As soon as you plug in your USB 3 port, it will come up with the Windows Mixed Reality startup screen. It will check the system. Once all OK, my Bluetooth wasn't showing there simply because I hadn't switched them on. I'm going to choose seated and standing as opposed to any room scale. It asks you to center the headset. I'm not going to use speech and then it starts to download the balance of the software fairly quick and easy and it's as simple as that you're up and ready to go. In order to use the Windows Mixed Reality with Steam you need to download the Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR application. It's free and it provides compatibility with thousands of Steam games. The downloads less than two megabytes, so quick and easy. So having now installed it, I've just spent 20 to 30 minutes in Sim. So what are my first impressions? Well, first and foremost, how comfortable it is. And that is because the headset truly is very light. Screen door effect? What screen door effect? The higher resolution has certainly come to the party and eliminated screen door effect to all intents and purposes as far as I'm concerned. The over-ear headphones provide good sound. There's been some comments regarding Mura. Mura is where there's a slight smearing when you're looking at high contrast areas. It would be like looking at a white wall through a slightly dirty window pane. I didn't pick up any of that in the short test that I've done, but we'll be looking for that in the full review. In terms of resolution, well, it's a big jump up from my Vive. I tried it in the Piper Arrow 3 from Just Flight, and I could read the gauges. If you wear glasses, the reverb should offer no problems. Extend the earphones, you can see the front tilt. Place it over your glasses, headset first, and then pull it down at the back. And to take it off, just do it in reverse. Coming up next from the Sim Hanger, we'll be putting the HP Reverb through its paces in X-Plane and Prepared. A full review. I look forward to you joining me then and bye for now.